You're trapped in a school with your friends and forced to play in a brutal death game that will kill everyone if you don't get the answers right. What do you do? The characters in this movie all seem innocent, but you'll be horrified when you find out what they did to deserve this. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the high school death game in Death Bell. All these students are about to be hunted for sport. They're getting ready for their final exams and everyone is nervous. But before they begin, one of the students hears a girl's voice begging for help and sees a ghost appear on his exam. Terrified, he jumps out of his seat and tells the teacher, Mr. Kim, that he saw something. The man thinks he's just nervous and helps him up, but he notices scars on the boy's wrists and asks about them. The kid insists it was the ghost and that he didn't do it. This teacher doesn't realize that he's about to be haunted for revenge. Okay, if you ever find a ghost on your exam paper, it almost certainly means you did something wrong, and now you're going to be punished for it. There's no point trying to explain what you saw, because nobody is going to believe you. Now with that said, this kid is not even the craziest person in this room, because this teacher is an absolute psychopath. We'll soon find out that this guy did something really screwed up by the end, but there's already enough here to tell me he shouldn't be trusted. First of all, we've all had that teacher who thinks he's cool and spends way too much time hanging out with his students. Every school has that teacher and they're all creepy as hell. But here, this goes up to a whole new level because in Korea, many teachers are notoriously harsh and even abusive. Admission into top universities is extremely competitive, so some of these Korean schools have a merciless education system. In some cases, beating kids in school is very normal, and Korean parents would totally approve of this treatment if it's getting their kids better grades. Now in this environment, Mr. Kim here is just way too nice, and that tells me this guy is hiding something really dark. But he's not the only one who has something to hide. The next day, they get the results from their exams and head to class where one of the students confiscates everyone's phones before the lecture begins. In the bathroom, this kid hears a strange voice calling his name when he suddenly pulled down, spilling the student's phones all over the floor. Dragged into a stall, he tries reaching for one to call for help but gets reeled in with no chance to escape. He's going to be used as a pawn in someone's elaborate revenge plot, and it's not going to end well for him. In the classroom, the kids are taking notes when the TV signal is suddenly interrupted with screams of terror. They're shocked to see a girl who is missing from class, and she's been locked in a glass tank. One of the teachers tries to call for help, but none of the phones are working, so she sends Ina here to go find help. In the staff room, Mr. Kim here realizes that the internet is down when the students suddenly burst in to tell them what's going on. That's when a strange voice on the PA announces that they've all become prisoners of a death game. The only way to survive is to solve his twisted puzzles, but if they don't answer correctly, they will all get killed, starting with this girl. Okay, this is a horrifying way to start your school day. This is just the first out of five death games, and they're going to get a lot crazier. They're trapped on campus with no way to escape or call for help, and if they don't answer questions correctly, people will die. To me, this sounds like a teacher's dream come true, because there's no better way to force your students to learn math than to turn it into a life or death scenario. That's exactly why I would be suspecting any one of these stressed out adults to be the mastermind behind this. Now, all these students are panicking, and that's a completely normal response, but it's not going to help. We should be studying the image to look for any signs of how to save her. The first thing to notice is that there's math written from inside the glass tank. The voice on the PA might want us to solve this equation, but to me, this is a massive waste of time. Not only is it backwards, but their only view of this is on a tiny screen, so it would be easy to answer the question wrong simply because it's too difficult to read. If it's me, instead of trying to solve a math equation backwards, I would solve the volume of the tank to figure out the time she has to live and use that time limit to search the entire school until we find her. The average height of a South Korean high school girl is about 160 centimeters, and it looks like she's slightly too tall to lay down flat in the tank. This one measurement helps me figure out the other lengths of the tank by proportion, and it wouldn't take too long to figure out that the tank's volume is roughly one cubic meter. Now, the trickier part of this is to eyeball the rate of water flow. A sink faucet runs 4 to 8 liters per minute, and this is easily 10 times more water than that. This means it's filling 60 liters every minute, so the whole tank will be filled in about 16 minutes, and that's how long we have to save this girl. That's not a lot of time if we don't know where she is, but the killer has actually given her location away by broadcasting the signal into the school. There's a reasonable chance of her being on school grounds because it's most likely the feed is being sent through a wireless video transmitter and have a maximum range radius of about 900 meters, which is close to the average K-12 school campus size. This means it's highly likely she's still on school grounds. 
there are a lot of students in this building. So if we order everyone to spread out, we could cover every inch in 60 minutes before the tank fills with water. We can also tell from the image that she's being kept in a dark and mostly empty room. So if we use this as a guide for where to search, like maintenance or storage rooms, we will be more likely to find her before she drowns. In the meantime, since we have no phones, I would pull the fire alarms to bring as many people into the equation as possible. The average fire response time is about nine and a half minutes, and it brings help into the school without risking our lives by trying to leave the campus. With the tank now filling with water, this teacher finds the power switches for the PA system and turns it off. But as he's about to leave, the TV suddenly turns back on. They're controlling the power from another source, and he thinks there's only one person who could have done this. Running back to the classroom, he confronts the worst student and accuses him of being the one who set up this death game. Mr. Kim rushes in to stop the man from beating the kid, but suddenly a girl screams and everyone turns to the TV monitor as they realize the tank is filled to the brim with water. The kidnapped student has drowned to death and she's only the first victim. They don't yet realize that there's already another kid missing and these games are about to get so much crazier from this point on. Okay, if I was in this tank, I wouldn't let this happen. First of all, we can actually confirm how much time it took to fill the tank full of water because we can see the clock here says it's 10.20 and that's when the water started flowing and she died at 10.44. That's 24 minutes, which was very close to our guess of 16 minutes. She obviously should have tried lifting the lid on the top of the tank to make sure it wasn't locked or weighted down by something. Personally, I would have seen that there was a camera pointed at me and tried to communicate with whoever was watching because I might be able to give them an idea of where I was being kept. This could be difficult to do using just hand signals and gestures, but thankfully, the Ridge, who are known for their sleek and slim Ridge wallet, have got you covered with a perfect solution to this problem. But let's first talk about these amazing wallets. Unlike big and bulky wallets that weigh you down, the Ridge wallet is the perfect size holding up to 12 cards plus room for cash, and are actually so durable they come with a lifetime warranty. They have over 40,000 five-star reviews, and since every Ridge wallet is made with RFID blocking technology, not even a ghost can steal your identity, which I love, especially in this aluminum navy design. In fact, the Ridge team is so confident you'll like their wallet, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days, and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't absolutely love it. Use my link in the description, ridge.com slash howtobeat, and my coupon code howtobeat to get 10% off your Ridge wallet purchase. And while you're there, pick up a pair of Field Notes Notebook Pack and Fisher Space Pen, which are waterproof and resistant to extreme temperatures, allowing you to play Pictionary with your friends in any death game situation. The pen can also write in any angle, underwater, and in zero gravity, which is pretty cool and useful, just in case. Now that's what I call an indestructible trio and a great Father's Day gift. Thank you to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. With one student dead, this teacher offers to go across the street to call the cops. They tell him it's too dangerous, but he thinks it's worth the risk and leaves the classroom, inspiring the students to do the same. The other teachers won't let them out and try to hold them back, but they can't control them. They all break out of the class and make it to the ground floor, but when they reach the doors, they see the teacher living towards them covered in blood. He falls to the ground and they rush to help him up, but he raises his finger to point to someone in the crowd. Someone in this room is responsible for these death games, but the man dies before he can tell them who. The intercom turns on, and the voice tells him if they leave the school, the same will happen to them, and they have no choice but to play his next challenge. The second game is a listening comprehension test, and if they answer it, they will understand why they're in this death game. They hear a boy screaming over the speakers, and it's the same kid who was captured in the bathroom. The voice on the speaker tells him to look in the auditorium for the next puzzle, and a mother's greed is their only clue. Okay, everyone was so traumatized from watching their teacher die that nobody even realized we can extract a lot of useful information from this teacher's death. Nobody saw how he got killed, but judging from the blood splatter patterns, it looks like he was beaten to death because the blood is coming mostly from the top of his head and the rest of the blood is just a drip trail from that area of origin. There aren't any impact patterns here that you would expect from stab wounds. Lastly, he was outside for less than a minute, so the killers must be extremely close by. And honestly, this would be our best chance to find out who was behind this. For all these reasons, I think the best strategy here is to get over the fear factor and have every student run outside. For the same reason that the teachers couldn't keep them in the classroom, there are too many students for the killers to control. And because nothing from this dead teacher suggests he encountered any booby traps, I think it's a risk we should all be safe to take as long as we stay in a large group. The students head to the auditorium where they find the entire floor covered with Chinese characters and only eight of them are the right ones. This girl asks her teacher if he has any ideas, but he can't think of anything, and they're running out of time. 
The next victim has been chained down in a cage and he'll suffocate in hot wax if they don't find the answer. But right now, he's the only one who knows that someone in the auditorium is a liar. Ina here figures out that if it's connected to the mother's greed, it could have something to do with bribing to raise her son's grades. Hearing this, the teacher suddenly realizes what the answer is. Be satisfied and stop, then no dangers await is an ancient proverb from Lao Tzu. It's a perfect fit to the puzzle, and they run down to tell the other students. They hurry to fill in the answer, but they're too late. The student's body lands on the stage, and that's one more dead student. Now, I can't show you any of this because it's crazy brutal, and YouTube would never allow it. But the student who was captured in the bathroom earlier just smashed down like a meteor, and his whole body is covered in wax. He looks like a candlestick from hell, and it's really horrifying. Okay, first of all, I should explain that in Korean high schools, studying Chinese characters and foreign languages are electives, and this is why everyone here can read them even though it's not their native language. Now for me, this would not be an easy problem to solve, because I don't read Chinese, but that doesn't mean it's impossible. There's a way we can hack the game here without knowing a single Chinese word, and it all has to do with realizing that this entire game is one giant bluff. This is a very elaborate game to set up here, because there are roughly 840 individual papers with Chinese letters on the floor. Even if all three killers helped out, it would take them over an hour to place all these cards in perfect evenly spaced rows in this auditorium. The only reason anyone would spend this much time setting this up is because they know it takes even more time to solve. This tells me that the whole game here is just a distraction. The best solution is to forget about this game and go look for the next one, because I can almost guarantee that the killers are relying on everyone being inside this auditorium solving this stupid puzzle so that they can set up their next plans somewhere else in the school. Every second we waste in here is helping the killers carry out their plans. I would let three of the smartest students stay here to try solving it and take everyone else outside to search the grounds for any strangers. Now, if it took a long time to set up this puzzle, the killers should have been caught on the CCTV cameras. I would be going to the security room to look at the tapes because we have a confirmed location and time frame to look into. While we were distracted by the drowning girl earlier, these killers were probably in the auditorium setting up this new death game. We will either be able to confirm how many killers there are and their physical descriptions, or the tapes will be erased and we will have no choice but to suspect that the security guard might be in on this. Everyone is horrified by the wax-covered corpse, and the death traps are getting more brutal. But when this girl mentions that her friend Jay Wu is missing, they all know another puzzle is coming. That's when Ina here realizes the connection between all the kidnapped victims. She runs out of the auditorium to the computer room to check the student test rankings, and they confirm that they're all being killed in order of who did best on their exams. This is terrifying, and this girl's pretty smart for figuring this out, but now that we know what happens to smart students in this school, she might want to drop that IQ by a few points. In the auditorium, this girl suggests that they'll be safer hiding in the student dorm rooms, and together they make plans to sneak away. Approaching the teacher, they lie that they're going to use the toilets and he lets them leave. But this was a terrible idea, because it will lead them straight into a brand new killer and it's going to be someone they know. Ina here returns and notices that her best friend is missing. They tell the teachers that the students are being targeted by exam ranking and her best friend is next on the list. Hearing this, Mr. Kim gathers all the students and tells them to split into two groups to search the campus. Okay, splitting up is a lazy suggestion. Right now, we've just been given vital information, and we should be taking full advantage of this. If we know the top students are in the most danger, sticking in a large group is the only way to guarantee safety. If kids ask to use the bathroom, tell them they're not allowed and they have to piss in buckets, because I'd rather be embarrassed for 35 seconds than to get kidnapped and die. Now, nobody has realized yet that the safest people in this room are actually the teachers. They aren't even on the kill list because they didn't take the exams. As soon as the students realize this, there will be a full-blown riot, and the teachers will be forced to be guinea pigs to test the game. Personally, I would make the teachers walk outside of the school to get help and check every room for traps. They wouldn't want to because a teacher has already been killed, so I would secretly offer the teachers a deal that I will not tell the other students that they are the safest people here, but only in exchange for a 4.0 GPA if we survive this death game, and my parents would be so proud. We still have to go and find the rest of the students, but since it's ranked by test scores, I would send out the lowest performing students to find the others. They're much lower on the kill list and are less likely to be kidnapped before the others. The students split up into two groups with one teacher each, and they look through the school, but it's already getting late. Meanwhile, in the dormitory, the other students are hiding in a room when suddenly they hear a noise coming from outside and realize someone else is in the building. A student turns the lights on and someone starts trying to break down the door, punching a giant hole straight through the wood. In the hallway is the kid who saw the ghost on his exam paper. Something has broken his mind, and the next time we see him, he's going to flip this whole death game upside down. 
One of the boys inside goes to take a closer look, and his head is violently yanked through as the other students start to scream. Outside, Kang Hyun here notices flashing lights, and when the girl realizes that it's coming from her room, they run into the building. The group catches up to her, but they find the gate locked and have to force their way in. They find the other students who are hiding, but in the chaos of the flashing hallways, they never notice that one of the girls, Su Jin, goes missing. She's going to have one of the most brutal deaths of anyone, but it's going to reveal who the killers are, and they'll all be shocked when they find out who it is. Meanwhile, Mr. Kim here leads his group through the halls, and this girl sees a light turn on across the campus. They run over to check it out, and find a classroom with another death game. On the wall, there are photos of numbers and letters carved into someone's skin, and they have to use these to figure out the password to this computer. His students think the numbers might be related to a cell phone's keypad, and they decipher the puzzle to spell out, Warm Spring Day, Remember the Auditorium. They successfully log into the computer, but it's too late. The victim has already been killed, and this time the murderer finally reveals her face. Okay, these students still don't realize that as long as they continue to play these games, the more control they give to the killers to find their next victim and set up their next puzzle. The more they just try to solve the puzzles, the longer they keep themselves trapped here until there's no more students left. It's incredibly stupid, and the only way out of this cycle is to abandon these games and turn the hunters into the hunted. Now, we can still use this puzzle to our advantage, because once again, the killers are giving us exactly what we need to hack the death game. The most interesting thing on this board is not the puzzle, it's the drawings. The killers are using these as a countdown, so everyone knows that if they don't solve the puzzle by 8.40, the student will be dead. But they're giving away too much information. We can see here at 8.30, a body is going to be in a box with flowers growing out of it. Right now, the time is 8.25, so I'd be rushing to the nearest place on campus where I might find a flower bed or a garden. Because if I have reason to believe that there's going to be a body placed near flowers at 8.30, then we might be able to catch the killers red-handed. Honestly, I'm not even thinking about saving this student's life as a top priority anymore. From this point on, we should only be thinking about finding and catching these killers. Meanwhile, in the dormitory, the power in the hallway returns and Ina is relieved to find her roommate is safe. All the students and teachers regroup in one of the classrooms, but they're still shaken up by the recent deaths. Ina here thinks about the answer from the last question and realizes that the word auditorium in Korean sounds very similar to the name Ji Won, the name of a student that mysteriously died earlier that year. The girl was the top performing student in her class, but after scoring badly on an exam, she was later found dead. This kid wonders if her ghost is forcing them to play this death game and their teacher insists it's the work of one man, but he's acting like he has something to hide. That's when the loudspeakers announce that the next test is about to begin. They're all too scared to look for the puzzle, and Mr. Kim here tells them he's going to go after the killer himself. The woman tells him not to rush off without a plan, but he ignores her and leaves to hunt down the kidnapper. Okay, the teacher has a point here. Blaming a ghost on your problems is not productive, and superstition is for the weak-minded. On the other hand, this is Asia, and ghosts hunt the shit out of us. Honestly, if there's any connection to the name of a girl from their school who died under mysterious circumstances, then it must be taken seriously no matter how crazy it sounds. If every puzzle is pointing to the death of this girl, Ji Won, it also means that somebody here is responsible for her death, and that person's punishment is being taken out on the whole school. This is where we need to find the guilty party and sell them out to save our own lives. Now, even though the PA system is being used by the killers, we can also use it to communicate with them. If it were me, I would broadcast that we want to help the killers seek justice and are willing to sell anyone out to do it. In my opinion, our two most likely suspects are Mr. Kim here and Bomb, the kid who saw the ghost on his exam paper. The boy was being haunted way before anyone else, so that makes him a suspect. This teacher is also exhibiting some pretty strange behavior. When he saw the solution to the puzzle that had the dead girl's name, he had a look of horror on his face like he knew something about it. He was also the only one to solve the puzzle about the mother's greed and bribery. Now that students are suggesting it's the ghost of this girl, Ji Wan, looking for revenge, he's getting way too defensive about the idea, like he's taking it personally. This man has guilty conscience written all over his face, and if he wants to go out alone to find the killer without backup, maybe he thinks this is all coming back to something he did and doesn't want it to be revealed. I think it's time to go full mutiny here and offer them both to the killers as a sacrifice for safe passage out of the death game. We outnumber Mr. Kim and Bomb 30 to 1 and could easily overpower them, tie them down, and leave them for dead as a peace offering. If they're innocent, then they'll still be alive by morning and will have nothing to worry about. The other teacher takes Ina and her friend to look for the next question, and find it hidden behind a wall in the teacher's lounge. It's a picture of their school cut into pieces with words written on each section, and they'll have to rearrange each part to spell out the hidden message. The girl thinks they should use the school's picture downstairs as a reference, so the boy volunteers to go fetch it and leaves them behind. 
Meanwhile, Su Jin, who was kidnapped in the dorm room earlier, wakes up inside of a washing machine, terrified. She's got 36 minutes before the spin cycle ends, but there's no guarantee she'll make it out alive. In the staff room, they finally solve the puzzle and discover that the answer reads, I know who killed me, my anger will endure, face the truth. The teacher realizes that all the answers and questions were about someone's murder, and it could only be the dead student, Ji Wan. They leave to find the other group and run into Mr. Kim here in the stairwell. They're relieved to see him again, but they're too late, as they hear an alarm beep in the distance, and when they go to investigate, they find Su Jin dead in the washing machine. Okay, these are supposed to be the best students in the school, and so far, they literally can't solve a puzzle to save someone's life. They failed every single test, but there's another interesting pattern developing here that they haven't noticed. If solving these puzzles actually could save the students' lives, then the killers would have to be watching them through the security cameras. This entire situation is designed to send a message of retribution, and if they can't send the message, it becomes a pointless exercise. I would limit the killer's ability to set up his games by simply cutting the audio and video wires to the PA system and monitors. We should take away any tools they have to communicate with us or scare us. They've had the benefit of knowing where we are at all times, and if we take this away, it levels the playing field to give us a fighting chance of either escaping or tracking them down. Distracted, they notice that the girl Ina has gone missing. Exploring her dead friend's old dorm room, she finds a girl writing in a book and asks who she is. Touching her shoulder, the girl suddenly grabs her hand and turns around, revealing that she's the ghost of Ji Wan. Ina begins to scream, and the others rush in to help her, but when the girl looks back at the table, there's nothing there except the dead girl's notebook. Okay, watching your classmates die in a death game is bad, but I would definitely prefer that scenario to facing a ghost. You can't fight a spiritual entity, so the obvious choice in this situation is to abandon the rest of the students and take our chances trying to escape the campus. But Ina here has one advantage that nobody else has. If she was best friends with the girl when she was alive, then she should try to communicate with her ghost to find out what it wants. Bomb saw the ghost on his exam the day before, but it has clearly driven him insane and it might have even possessed his body to hunt down the girl's killer itself. What happened to Bomb proves to us that this ghost is dangerous, but if it's handled the right way, it's also a resource. Ina here is our best chance at learning what she knows, and she needs to find a way to get that information. We need to make a deal with this ghost and promise to do anything she wants in exchange for our lives. If I were Ina, I would promise to help avenge her and all we need is a name of who her killer was. If the ghost is on our side, we can be fully protected and I would gladly help capture and kill anyone in the class if it means I can secure my freedom. Ina tells them all what she saw, but Kang Hyun here has an idea. He suggests they go to the PA room first to find out where the killer is broadcasting from and they all agree. Inside, the kid finds the cables linked to the loudspeakers and pulls them out of the system with the help of the others, discovering a hidden line that goes down into the floor below. Following the cable underneath the school, the group sees a student behind a pillar and they realize it's Bomb, the kid who saw the ghost on his exam paper the day before. They try to talk to him, but he has a crazy look in his eye and suddenly runs at the girl. Kang Hyun tries to hold him off as long as he can, but gets stabbed and killed. Bomb here has gone insane and is about to kill Ina, but she's saved when the teacher bashes his head in, beating him to a bloody pulp. A tune suddenly plays over the loudspeakers and the group realizes that a final victim has been kidnapped. They continue following the cable until they reach a locked door and on it is a chalkboard with their next test. The teacher examines the numbers and figures out if they multiply the outer digits and the inner digits, they'll get the next numbers in the sequence, equaling the grade, class, and student number of the dead girl G1. Inside the room, they stop the death trap just in time and try to find a way to cut the girl down, but she's suddenly pulled higher into the air and they see the kidnapper looking down from the roof. They beg to know why she's doing this, but the woman doesn't respond and drops the girl on the floor, killing her instantly. The teacher, Mr. Kim, climbs up to the rooftop and sees no one, but he's suddenly attacked from behind. She tries to stab him with her knife, but he throws her off and strangles her to death. Looking at the killer's face, he realizes that the woman is the mother of Ji Wan. The death game is over, and they failed to save another victim, but now they finally caught the killer. The next day, the school reopens to have a memorial service for everyone who died during the death game, and Ina here walks out for some fresh air, but she spots some documents that were in the last death trap room. Flipping through this book, she finds a picture of Ji Wan and her parents and recognizes her father before she's suddenly grabbed from behind. She finds herself tied to a chair and gagged, as the father introduces himself over the PA system. Everyone starts to panic as the auditorium begins to fill with gas, and he's got one final game left. He plays a video of his daughter's murder for all of them to see, and demands that the murderer reveal himself or else he'll kill everyone in the auditorium. Ji Wan discovered that Mr. Kim was leaking test questions to parents in exchange for money. She threatened to report him to the principal, and he killed her to make sure no one would find out. 
The only people who knew were the crazy kid who saw her die and her parents who found her phone, which recorded the whole thing. With his secret now exposed, Mr. Kim here goes crazy with guilt and threatens to kill them all, but he stops himself. Seeing their frightened faces, he puts down the axe, but is suddenly stabbed by the security guard. That's when they all realize that this guard is Ji Won's father. He's been watching from the shadows this whole time, and nobody suspected him to be the designer of this death game. He hacks Mr. Kim to pieces as the others look on, and the man finally gets revenge for his daughter's death. But what do you think? How would you be Death Bell? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How to Be playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.